part of the Earglue Media family of podcast. You're listening to the Cantina Cast. Your home for thought-provoking Star Wars talk. Join Adler and Jonesy in breaking down the latest news, trailers, movies, and of course, your favorite characters from a galaxy far, far away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cantina Cast. My name is Albert Padilla, and this is episode 292. I will finish what you started. Uh, we're going to go old school Cantina Cast, looking back on this quote. Analyzing what we may have thought when The Force Awakened released and how it relates to today and possibly look at maybe what this quote could mean for The Rise of Skywalker. And to do all of that, I am joined today by none other than the old school pimp who walks with a limp. He's the <laughs> founder of Cantina Cast and your glue media, uh, but you know him as a dark lord of podcasting. Please welcome Mike Rondo back to the show. Mike, welcome back, sir. Oh, well. Oh, well, it's good to be back. Um, I'm filling in for Jonesy. Jonesy, I cannot confirm nor den- deny if he's out storming Area 51 right now. I don't know if he <laughs> no. said something about tinfoil hats and he had to go. I'm so, pretty sure he's yeah. there. Uh, oh, probably. Yeah. Wait, so let me I, get I, this right. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jonesy takes time off and he gets PTO. But when I need to take time off, I don't get a PTO at, at all. It's on my own no. dime. Is that yeah, right? Exactly. Yes. All right. Okay, I'm fine with him. That, that's just how it goes. You're the host. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, so pro bono right. work in all seriousness, welcome back on the air. And, and and let me just say, even as the worst podcaster retiree in the history of retirees, we're always it glad. It would seem that way, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would seem that I've not gone away. You've completely. never gone I, away. I, I like my, I'm like, I am like Sidious. I'm looming in the background, uh, you know, doing my thing with Star Wars. Um, So, yeah. Well, it's like Luke said, know. no it, one's ever really gone, right? That That is true. I am, I am like, uh, I don't know. I'm a bad penny, I guess. I just keep turning up. Uh, when you don't want me, but yep. here I am. No, we're always glad to have you on the air, especially when, well, you know, when you can find the somehow. time or whenever you don't have the choice. Yeah, well, that's true. I, well, <laughs> I had time and a choice, but this time at least. All right. All right. So we've got, uh, let's do some news. There's a couple things that have come out here just recently and well, one dropped today. Yeah. Actually. And this is well, kind of spoilerish, but we'll yeah, get into it. Anyway. Maybe. I mean, it's, I guess it, it is a little bit, but Star Wars Insider, the covers were released and I have not looked at these, honestly. Before we came on the air, Mike just said very nonchalantly, oh, by the way, there's some new stuff in there. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at these covers. Uh, I'm looking at them for the first time, so this will all be live for me. But uh, before I jump into it, what what are your thoughts on these? We've got one that's like the, what is this, the front cover, and the other one's like the insides thing or something? Yeah, I think so. It's I think it's the uh, one says, it says Merry Christmas on it, the one with Ray and Kylo. Yeah, Yeah, well, thank you. It's it's a little early, but hey, we'll go with it. Yeah. it, it, I think that's the inside because you see numbers on it. So I'm assuming it's good, something to do with the inside. It's not the actual cover or something, but the main one, I suppose it's with Kylo, the regular first order troopers, mm-hmm. the Knights of Ren, uh, of course, the Sith troopers. And then we got a Phasma snow trooper looking thing, which I probably the most interesting thing out of the whole cover for me. And then we got the Dorito TIE Fighters, the TIE Fighters as you yeah. said. Although the Imperial ships were really Dorito-shaped in the beginning anyway. So is it really a stretch? Anyway. No, it's not. Uh, and then we got a yellow Interceptor, it looks like. And then we got the the Gears of War cycle that's on there, uh, which we'll we'll get into. And, of course, we have the, the Jump Troopers. I don't know if it's the Sith ones or... They look if red. It's, yeah, or if it's the regular First Order ones. It looks like the red ones. So I don't know. I mean, I see a lot of... Red, <laughs> so I don't. I don't know. Even the red troopers, like the Sith troopers, look. Maybe they could be white. And it just looks like the tone. Yeah, is just red, and it throws you off. But I, I don't know. I I'm still confused over. We got regular force, first order, and then we got the the you know this whole Sith troopers here. I don't know. I don't know what to believe anymore. It, it's crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting yeah. how they kind of integrate and if they get along, they work well together. How they complement each other, all that. But in terms of this. This particular uh, image, I actually really like it. I think the the coloring is really cool. Um, that white stormtrooper, phasma trooper, whatever. I don't. Even, it's probably got a name, and I'm not even think I'm blanking on it right now. It almost looks like the ranger, but um, mm, that could be. Was the wasn't that the one that was on the cover for the visual dictionary for the Rise of Skywalker? Ah, uh, it might have been. I don't know. It, it, this is new to me. I haven't really okay. actually. I haven't got into. A lot of the spoilers of late, because you know, you and I, we just we watch Reddit all the time. I already know I the whole, watched, whole movie goes. 
Yeah, I, well, I'm getting there as well. I, I know all the details with that, but I just don't look at the like the figures and everything. I know the Lego stuff. I've seen that, so that might yeah. be throwing me off. I don't typically jump into all that because I wait till we get to the visual dictionaries and stuff. So I don't, you know. So I, I don't know. No, you, but you could be right. Yeah. I don't know. It looked like a snow trooper to me. So I got I got one little small beef with this. <laughs> um, the gears of wash cycle. Yeah, like. I mean, I get it. All right. So I'm already kind of thinking it through and I'm not, I'm, I'll probably step down from the ledge just a little bit. But when I first saw this, because it was this, this particular vehicle was leaked and it's not a huge leak or anything like that, but it, there was a toy that was leaked just recently. Listen, I think everyone already bought all the toys for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, Cause they, they seem yeah. to be already out. I'd like, oh, but anyway, I mean, Yak Face just released all yeah. of them the other day, but anyways. For, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is like uh, in the age of like repulsor lifts, I was very surprised to see a vehicle like this. Now, now granted we have, ATSTs and and ATATs and or ATATs wherever whatever generation you're from, those guys still walk and and you can make an argument. Well, if you know, there's still value in having something that walks around like that. But just something this small, it's very interesting that they would go with something like this and and make it track based as opposed to having repulsor lift technology. I think my beef is I just don't like the way it looks. Um, it's almost like it's reminiscent of uh, Ray's speeder. It's just silly. Yeah. Um, Looks like a big and engine. maybe I don't know when when you look at these pictures like the back to back like the Merry Christmas one, the two it looks like two sons obviously are there so that's interesting there. Mm -hmm. um, are they back on Tatooine when and this is Ray using that? I don't know. It'd be interesting. I don't know if that's Ray per se. I haven't looked. I know the toy like kind of leaked something leaked earlier. Not this image per se, but I think the toy itself. And I don't know if Ray's using this or somebody else. I can't remember off the top of my head, but. We're probably going into more detail about this than we really need we really to. But need hey, to, yeah. we dissect walking sticks on the show. So, you know, what can I say? Yeah, which is going to be, you've already spoiled the next episode. So we're coming back. I, I it's know. the walking sticks uh, one year later episode that we're doing. Oh, I can't. I look forward to yeah. that. No, but anyways, this is a, this is cool artwork. Again, it's not too spoilerish. I mean, most of the stuff they've already released in promotional and, and, and certainly if you're following any of the toy releases and stuff like that, um, you've seen all this already. So, but it looks Yeah, cool. and even... Even the Merry Christmas one, like the the reverse of it, like with Ray and everybody, all the mm -hmm. heroes, so to speak. There's nothing that interesting. Uh, the only thing I can say is interesting is on the first order side of things. I guess uh, one we should mention is Kylo Ren. You get a better look of his helmet, helmet yeah. pieced together. Yeah. So that's interesting stuff. I wonder if it's like Sith alchemy that he's using there. We got that the uh, UT X wing. Oh yeah, yeah. Pretty stuff. Yeah, that. the orange one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Burn orange. All right. Thank you. All right. Yes. Yeah. Well, go, go, go hook them horns. Hook them horns. Enough of this. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Marvel's ongoing series. Uh, we kind of mentioned this already, but it's coming to an end uh, with issue 75. And they're doing like this one big final one shot epilogue that's coming out in December that's supposed to, you know, kind of tie up that whole series. It's called Star Wars Empire Ascendant. And it looks like it's this one looks pretty exciting. I don't I mean, I don't know how, how closely you're following the comics today, but StarWars.com had a whole article on this, and, and the cover looks really interesting and intriguing, but uh, we've got Dr. Aphra in this. We've got uh, Bylart Valance is also in this. Of course, all the main characters are going to be this, and this sounds like it, it is going to lead up right to the events of uh, them getting onto Hoth Base, so, or at least getting set up in Hoth Base. I mean, it's intriguing. Um, the comics, actually, the Snow Comet sparked what we're about to talk about tonight anyway, so mm -hmm. and that's a rare thing, because the comics and the and the books themselves haven't done much of anything for me in a couple of years now. Like there hasn't been anything that caught me or sparked my imagination or got me on the speculation train so much. Yeah, so yeah. this could possibly get me interested. Like I'll, I'll check it out. I'll definitely listen to you and Jonesy talk about it. So I'll know what happens anyway. That's the beauty of editing the show. I, I get the cliff's notes, so to speak of the comics and the books. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say about it and, and where they go and how they tie it in. I, I get a little wary with the, you know, like one of the issues I had with the Snow comic. Otherwise, it was good. The problem I had was being on Dagobah. Otherwise, if you'd been anywhere else, I would have been fine with it. But then again, you need something to carry weight, which is what I want. Yeah, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I got over it. Not the end of the world, right? So, yeah, I think um, this to, to yeah. take it back to this to take it back to this comic. What's interesting for me, I think, is I just I'm curious as to what how much time we're going to have leading up to the events of Empire Strikes Back, because once we get there, that's pretty well covered. Right. So I don't know how much time this this next issue or series is going to start with the Empire era. And, you know, 
I would like to think that at some point we're going to get what happens between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi in some next series that comes out, you know, two, three years later. I'd be down for that as well. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much time they're going to have. It, is it going to be a year or two? And if so, just how much happened uh, during that year or two? Do they focus on Luke's training, you know, more? Um, mm. Is there more of him doing things that we didn't expect him to do? Maybe he spoke to other uh, Force ghosts and, and maybe that we get the first inclinations of him wanting to, uh, you know, have an interest sparked for archaeology and finding artifacts and relics and all that stuff. I think all that stuff would be kind of cool just to kind of plant seeds in because we know that's going to be the Luke Skywalker later down the road here, you know, 10, 15 years. So. Well, the only issue I have with, with these types of things is it flirts with the things that have gone on before. And you're like, well, I really didn't, do we really need to go there? You know, that type yeah, of stuff. I, yeah. I, that's always been a concern of mine. Um, I know you've guys voiced it as well. It's like, did we really need this answer to this? We couldn't have left it like a mystery, which was the beauty of the original trilogy. And even the sequel, uh, not the sequels, but the uh, prequels, uh, there was that mystery. And even the sequels in a way, I mean, granted it's new, so there's not those things that we want filled in yet so i i don't know i don't know but anyway uh we'll see what you guys have to say when it comes out though all right well, i'm looking forward to it um can't wait for that comes out uh in november that's number uh the last issue is number 75 comes out this november and then we'll get the uh, empire ascended just rightly after that so and then the next thing we've got to talk about and we're kind of just gonna i'd like to just we've got one last bit of news and then we'll kind of roll right into the main topic but i think this last piece of news kind of ties closely to what we're going to discuss today um, because we are very close. To, we've got the final cover, uh, the official cover of Age of Resistance. Uh, I'm sorry, the rise of Kylo Ren number one. and Which is interesting, yeah, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, so this cover, if you haven't had a chance to see it, you've got Kylo Ren standing there. He's got his uh, lightsaber ignited and standing predominantly in the background is Vader. Uh, Vader with the red eyes, which... I always enjoy more than the black eyes. Um, but this is an interesting comic. Like uh, we finally, you know, there's a, a lot of information that's come out recently. Charles Soule has done some interviews and he's talked about this um, in terms of what we can, what we can expect. And it says set before the events of the force awakens, we get the sense that Kylo Ren is very much living in the shadow of Vader here. Um, and the, uh, the name of the issue is, what is it? Do we have the name for that here? No, it's not. Uh, no, no I it's just called Rise of, Rise of Kylo Ren. And it's, yes. it's one of four, right? Yes. Um, here it is. Sorry, I just found it here. With Ben Solo's fall comes Kylo Ren's rise. Young Ben Solo is legendary. Luke Skywalker, most promising pupil. Uh, as the son of Rebel Alliance heroes, Leia Organa Han Solo, as well as Luke's own nephew, Ben has the potential to be a great force for light in the galaxy. But the Skywalker legacy casts a long shadow. The currents of the dark side run deep and Darth Vader's blood runs in, in Ben's veins. Voices call from both his past and his future, tell him, telling him he must, uh, who he must be. Um, he will shatter, he will be reforged, his destiny will be revealed. Snoke awaits, the Knights of Ren await. Ben Solo's path to his true self begins here. And I apologize, I should have apologized. I'm, I'm like running a cold right now, so I'm like stumbling over my words. Ah, but. don't. Don't worry that uh, you, you know we, you do know how I pronounce names on the no, show. Yeah, so, so we're I mean, good. That's, yeah. that's, this whole thing's going to be a you're, disaster. Exactly. You're doing well better than me and I can't <laughs> even talk right now. So, but uh, case, what did you, what do you think we, when you, when you hear that? Though? Well, first, well, let me just say the the key thing there for what I want to discuss is the voice is called to him for both his past and his future, Yeah, which leads me into the helmet, which is where we get to the whole beginning of, I will finish what you started. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to throw that out there to tease what we're going to do in a second. I just want to get your thoughts on Vader in the background here, because it's an interesting look. It's like a Ralph McQuarrie meets Rebels uh, Vader, so to speak. Yeah. I actually like it. Um, I don't know. It's very weird. And like Kylo looks pretty good. I like him like this. I, I like him better than the actual movie, to be honest. Um, I don't know what your thoughts quickly, and then we'll get back into the what we're going to no, do. This, this was always the I mean, when Kylo Ren came out. I mean, there was, make no mistake about it, I loved the image. I thought it was cool. I like the helmet, the, you know, I, there's different variations of the helmet that JJ went through. If you've got any of the, um, like the uh, behind the scenes books, the art of books and stuff, you can kind of see how that character development progressed. And where they landed, I thought was perfect, just perfect. Everything, and the minute we saw him, even from the back, right, when he ignites his lightsaber in that very first teaser for The Force Awakens, this was a very, very intriguing character. And he continues to be intriguing. Um, I like the fact that he's, 
up again, you know, you've got Vader in the background. I think that says a lot about where his mind is and, and really how much he honors and respects Vader. And we'll talk about that here in a second in terms of where that's probably coming from. But um, I think for me, and this is what Jonesy and I were talking about when we, we broke this, uh, when, we didn't break it, but when we first talked <laughs> about this, this comic, when it was announced, the one thing that we were super excited about is that you have somebody like Charles Sewell, who I feel has a very good grip, no pun intended, has a very good <laughs> grip on Vader and Anakin and what that, that those stories should be like and what they should be focused on. He does really well with conveying um, a lot of the emotional and, and uh, anguishing pieces of uh, Vader without really getting into the, the – without having to show you know, his, um, his physical – uh, proudness. We we know exactly how 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 well he is and how adept he is in the Force and all that. But getting to see the psychological part of Vader, I think that's what Charles Sewell does really well. When you couple that with the fact that he's now going to get inside the head of Kylo Ren, and mm-hmm. I think we're in for some really cool uh, stories. And I think we're, we're into some very cool parallels that we probably maybe not have even yet to begun to kind of think about or uncover. So all that yeah. sounds like pretty exciting. I I definitely agree. Actually, I'm looking for. I will read. This one, especially now that I've got my cockamamie speculation in my head and we're curious where this all leads. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the one thing, you know, everyone knows that I'm not the biggest fan of The Last Jedi. It's a, it's a pretty well known. Um, but I did say in the initial review of the show that Kylo Ren was pretty intriguing at the end of it. I think he was like the uh, the bright spot, for, which is ironic because he's a dark side character, uh, of the movie for me. At least as far as the characters go, I thought he was more interesting then, and it was funny because Jonesy and I, I think on the recent episode where we talked about Ahsoka, but we even said back in the initial review of The Last Jedi, like uh, when we were talking about Kylo, like it seems odd that he's the leader because he's not, we always s- s- equate him to like Anakin. He's more of a general, field general, out with the troops, doing what he's got to do, taking it by force, and not so much the brains behind everything. And so last last week when you guys were talking it, with about the snow comment, I got to thinking, I you know between I don't know what it was. I think I was I saw something on 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 uh, Twitter about Bendemption, which is a name that I can't I just can't stress enough that we got to stop using, and we need to be adults and just use Redemption if we're going to do it. So <laughs> <The> please, <adults. laughs> please, just and I know Katie's going to butcher me for saying all that, and she's going to come and get me. I welcome it, Katie. But anyway, um, so I'm I'm thinking of this. All right, Bendemption. I'm listening to you guys and I get to the part where you guys are, are talking about, I'm editing the show and I'm listening to you guys talk about the end of that comic, which was very intriguing where he blows up the, he couldn't, he didn't kill his parents. He blows up the cave. Snoke didn't see that. So then I get on this, although you could look at Snoke and say, oh, well, I did know what Kylo did because he had that smirk. It's like uh, almost like Sidious, like yeah. I knew what you did, but I'm not admitting to right. it. Um, or you could interpret it as I did where he, he doesn't kill his parents. Snoke is deceived. And then that last line that you, I think it might've been you or over Jonesy, you just said that line where he says, well, you won't need another apprentice. And I'm thinking to myself, well, wait a minute, you know, is Kylo more deceptive and smarter than I realized? Like, is he, is he much more cunning than I, I gave him credit for? And then I think to the last Jedi where he's says to Ray, which is, I think the one time where he's actually true, where he says, destroy the Sith and the Jedi forget all this and kind of rule the galaxy the way he wants it to be and all that other stuff. Um, paraphrasing, obviously it's a, not exactly that. Um, so I'm just, well, how could this all kind of mingle together? And I just want to preface this, that I might not be the only one who's come up with this. Maybe someone on Reddit did maybe another podcaster or something, because I'm sure we've all, when, when the force awakens came, came out that line, I will finish what you started was like, okay, all right, where are we going? Where are we going with this? And then it kind of didn't go anywhere. And we're like, all right, well, when you see The Last Jedi and he takes out Snoke, you're like, all right, well, maybe that's it. Maybe he's going to rule the galaxy. And maybe that is true. But maybe there's something more there. Maybe, And I got to thinking, all right, well, how could Ben have this redemption? Is it because he found out something about Palpatine and Sidious coming back and actually is the one that's pulling the strings? And the only way he thought he could do anything is to actually become the, the monster because he has this like twisted idea of what Anakin was and or Vader. Maybe he believes Vader is the one who killed Palpatine. And, and so he thinks he has to be evil. I don't know. It's convoluted. It's not exactly, uh, uh, 
well thought out. It was just something that popped in my head off the cuff. And I kind of, we, you know, came up with this and, and we kind of ran with it. But I guess we'll start with you, Albert, is where, what was your mindset when you heard that line first? Uh, I will finish what you started and then you can go poke holes all you want <laughs> into my cockamamie theory. And maybe I'll stimulate, there might be more stuff I have in my head. I just, I was throwing it all out there, so I'm yeah. not sure, but let's go. Um, I think so. So when I, when the line was very first stated uh, in the trailer. Yes. My mind immediately goes to the dark side because he's staring at the helmet, right? That's not Anakin. It's Darth Vader. And I Correct. think that's where I was expecting this whole story to go is that, and that this, and, and he was right. I mean, I mean, I think that's what we were led to believe, especially in that teaser trailer. I think if you look at the force awakens now, retrospectively, um, we're very much led to believe that this is exactly down the path he's going until we get to the very end and things start to change a little bit when he and Anakin, uh, he and Ray are fighting, uh, and then obviously with The Last Jedi, things really take a, a, a complete turn um, in a totally different direction. I think that's where, you, where I think some people feel like, OK, that that kind of uh, the motivation there was probably abandoned. Right. The the drive that he had to become like Vader was suddenly abandoned for other reasons. Um, and, and maybe that's where I think a lot of people felt like it became very disconnected or disjointed. Go, go f fast forward to uh, The Rise of Skywalker. You know, he's got the helmet on again. We've speculated a few times now about why he would go back to it. What what kind of a state of mind is he in now that he feels like he needs to don the helmet once again? And I think when that's that line of I'll finish what you started really for me could probably break down into three different things. And I think what I'd like to do is maybe just talk about each one of them and then we can kind of, you know, flesh out and tease out your um, your theory a little bit more here or your speculation okay. a little bit more. But the the three things that come to mind, and if you think of more, Mike, people listening to the show, let us know. I mean, there's probably a billion of these things if you really want to dive into it. But I think the three primary ones, the first one would be like fulfilling the Emperor's bidding uh, to wipe out the Jedi so that the Sith could once rule the galaxy again. Right. This is this yeah. is what Palpatine told Vader they were going to do. They never got to see that to fruition. And now. Uh, you could have an, you could at least going back to the force awakens, you could have a Kylo Ren who looks at that and thinks, okay, that was the original intent here, right? It was, the original intent was for him to wipe out the Jedi, have the Sith rule once again. And that's what, uh, I plan to fulfill. The second thing is, and, and this is a far fetched one, but maybe there is, you could argue that he was trying to find a way to bring Padme back to life if, for the sake of his father or, at the very, at the very minimum, just eternal life in general, right? That's mm -hmm. what something that Anakin was going after. He was trying to figure out how to live forever, bring back people, that kind of thing. Um, you know, or maybe he would have thought to bring back Vader himself. Maybe that's so. That's that's a possibility. I mean, if he looks up to his grandfather. Well, here's the thing. I'm in my mind, going back to that line where he's sitting there thinking. I'm thinking about all right, all the stuff that I've known we've known previously up to, to that point that he gets to, to the helmet point point and the stuff you see in the, the last Jedi, you're like, all right, well maybe if he knows is, is it maybe Palpatine? Cause there's rumors of, you know, the helmet being possessed and we didn't see that yet, which maybe they're saving that. I, I don't like that so much. I like maybe the idea that he finds out something with Palpatine and he's doing this. Uh, maybe he's doing You could look at it two ways. All right. Is he trying to destroy Palpatine or Sidious once and for all? Uh, and then rule the galaxy, which, you know, Anakin said, well, we can make it the way we want or whatever. Or is he trying to get closer to Palpatine to be the ultimate evil in a way? Like he's trying to become his apprentice, so to speak, or whatever, to be what Snoke once was, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. until he took him out. Um, because I think for a lot of us, when you look at The Force Awakens and even in The Last Jedi, we are in, leading up to the movie, The Last Jedi, we all kind of get on the bandwagon, I think, of saying, all right, he's just a puppet master. He's just a puppet. He's not really the puppet master. He's just kind of the guy that's in the bathrobe walking out, getting his newspaper and, you know, saying hi. But the guy <laughs> running the show is really in the backyard, in the shed, crunching the numbers and cashing all the bills or something like that. I don't know. That was a weird story. But anyway, <laughs> um, so that you can look at it that way. I don't know. But continue, sir. I'm sorry. I'm just yeah, no, throwing things out. That's the um... So that was the second one. You kind of hit on the third one there, but the the third, you know, what is he trying to finish could be just like you said, filling, fulfilling Vader's bidding and ending, you know, he mentions ending this destructive conflict, right. Once and for all, when he asked Luke to join him. Um, yes. And that could just, that could really mean essentially what Kylo Ren was talking about in the last Jedi is 
forget the Sith, forget the Jedi. Let's just start over, right? Get rid of all, get rid of everything. Um, maybe that's what he's thinking Vader's original plan was to do and not have either one of them, um, you know, renounce both Jedi and Sith and just be these force dominant, uh, you know, rulers of the galaxy, if you will. And, hmm. you know, there's, there's, uh, it's, it's really hard to say. And I, I think we're, uh, that's the thing about the, the rise of Skywalker. Like, I really hope there's a lot of things they resurface or if they don't resurface them, at least they just kind of tie them back to, to give them more, a little bit more meaning. Um, cause we didn't get it in the last Jedi so much, but they don't necessarily need to flesh this whole out. I mean, we don't need to, this doesn't need to be the, 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 the middle thread of this whole storyline. This isn't really what it's well, about. No, I, right? I but, mean, just, well, just like we were saying earlier on the top of the show, we don't want all the answers. Yeah. I just need some kind of a indication of what that answer could be. I guess you could say, like, let me piece it together, but kind of lead me there, so to speak, if, if that makes any kind of sense. I believe the one time Kylo was actually telling the truth was when he told Ray, let's forget both of them and just kind of start anew, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but was that because he knows going to Sidious is, is the way to go and that's where he needed to go? See, there's something in my mind that Kylo obviously knows that we don't, and I understand that, you know, all that stuff. Um, but I think he thought, and, and again, of course, the, the bigger hole is with Luke because Luke, you know, had lighted, ignited the saber and then started this whole process. So in one way that pokes a hole in this whole thing that Kylo or Ben knew something or did Ben know that that was going to happen and it just kind of went from there uh, because he didn't kill Luke. If you notice, and I meant to say this to you guys, uh, he did the same thing to, to that hut that he did with his parents in the, in the tree. He just blew it up and kind of went from there. So he still couldn't bring himself to kill Luke then. I mean, obviously it changes a few years down the line, of course. Yeah. Um, so that's I found that interesting that he didn't really do that. I, I meant to mention that there. So I, I, I'm not sure what would cause Ben to have this, like, unless he had this vision um, or, you know, maybe Palpatine's manipulating things like he was before. And, and I see the problem is we don't know what the heck Palpatine is or where he is or what he's doing or how he is or what he looks like or how that all plays into things. And then with the Sith troopers, you see with, with Kylo here, it's like, well, where did that come from? Because uh, like a moment ago, he wanted to get rid of the Sith. So, I mean, I don't know yeah. what, your thoughts. Well, sir? I, I don't mean I, to keep no, you gotta, here, but you're fine. I got a question though for you because in the, it, yeah, it kind of plays into all of this, but there's one thing that we're kind of uh, maybe just talking around that we probably should address. And just in that, and that's, do you think that Kylo Ren going into the rise of Skywalker knows who Palpatine or knows that Palpatine's alive, right? Do we think he knows that he was alive well, either yeah. in the force awakens, the last Jedi, or is this something that you think is going to be a revelation for him in the rise of Skywalker? Well, there's two ways of looking at it. If you believe my speculation here from the beginning, I will finish what you started, which in my mind is, finish killing Sidious. So I have a feeling he knew about this because mm. again, if you go into the comic and you see the deception that he had, and then the deception of him killing Snoke, Snoke didn't even see that coming when he thought he could have. Uh, the other thing is, yeah, movie wise, filmmaking wise, if you're JJ and telling that story on the big screen, you'd probably want that relevant. Rev I can't even say it uh, on the big screen. You know what I mean? Like that would be a more aha. And then we'd all be like, oh, all right. Okay, cool. Instead of how I just pieced it together. But then again, I like that piecing things together. So, uh, I don't know. What's your take on that? I, I, I'm of the, I don't think he knows that the emperor is okay. alive. Um, and the only reason I say that is because I think it would be kind of lazy if he did, because if, if he, <laughs> if he did, you know what I'm saying? Then, then all of a sudden, well, how much of, how much of what happened in the force awakens and how much of what happened in the last Jedi. I mean, it really throws everything that Kylo Ren did and said for a loop, yeah. right? Because there's, he, it would just change a lot of that storyline. Um, and it would make us second guess and doubt, uh, really what his intents were, his intentions were for both, I think the part seven and part eight, uh, mm -hmm. and which, which is fine. I mean, they could do that, but I think it's just a cleaner storyline from a narrative perspective to just say, Oh, he's out there and, uh, or, or he's possessed somebody or he's a ghost or whatever form that, that Palpatine's in. I think it's a cleaner narrative to say that he doesn't know who he is and you just take it up from there and say, okay, now what does Kylo do with this? What does he do yeah. with knowing that he's not 
the the supreme leader of the first order because there's somebody there's a bigger fish in the you know in the pond um and, and what does that dynamic look like right what is yeah. what does the emperor want from kylo ren what does kylo ren want from the emperor now um i think there's a, there's probably more avenues there for the story to go well see there you go you're poking holes in in the the speculation here which is good but my all right so all right if it isn't this if kylo's mission here isn't okay i knew about palpatine and all this other stuff um how do you get there with the 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 whole uh redemption thing uh because for me i was just trying to piece it together the other night after listening to you guys and 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 whatnot and i was like well this kind of works in a way and that's based off of stuff we know now obviously not what we see that's going to happen in in the rise of skywalker i guess if you have that revelation i can't even say it tonight revelation Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. See, you're doing far better than me. So uh, if he finds out in the movie, okay, that starts the redemption thing. But do we get any, you know, I'm going to go back to the original uh, trilogy for a moment where we kind of get the stirrings of of Anakin coming back in that movie, in Empire. You kind of get, see it starting a little bit. We don't get that necessarily with The Last Jedi. In fact, I would say he gets more to the dark than anything else at the end of that movie. There's like no hope really there. Cause Leia's like, yeah, I always knew and there's no hope. And then Ray shuts the door on him and then he's sheds his little tear there. And, yeah. and that's the end of that. And now here we go. So where is this redemption going to come from? I mean, he killed Han Solo, all that stuff. How do you get there? If he takes out the ultimate evil. Okay. That's great. Again, it's and, and it, it kind of mirrors Anakin in a way. All right, he kills the Emperor. Well, does that poop on Anakin again? This is the big, again, we're throwing a lot of things up in the air and things might not fall the way we want them to. Um, so if he kills the Emperor, okay, he's redeemed in the eyes of the Force and maybe, all you know, all the Force ghosts and all that stuff and Rey. But as the galaxy, like Anakin, he's not really redeemed. They're still going to look at him as a... A jerk. <laughs> so a big jerk face, as you would call me. Um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on any of all of that? If you can remember anything I said just now. Yeah, no, I, I was going all over, but go ahead. Well, so yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so I think the first thing is going back to the end of the last Jedi and Kylo Ren's state. My theory is that he regresses. And I think, I think he's, you know, he's, he feels like he's either lost Ray, uh, he lost his father. That didn't feel as good as maybe he thought it was going to feel uh, good about. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have Snoke now, um, right or wrong, right? He's probably been in that abusive relationship. And if you know anything about those types of relationships, yeah. yeah, you feel like, hey, I need this person in my life, right? So he's got this void now that's that's being that's been emptied out there, right or wrong. Um, he's put in charge now as supreme commander. I don't think it's what he wants to do. Uh, I think he's probably able to do it. But yet it's another layer of responsibility and accountability that he may not necessarily have the right mental state or be in the right mental state to kind of take on. Um, Plus his internal conflicts with that, with, with Hux and that. Oh, yeah. I mean, vying for power. So, he's got a, yeah. he's watching his back from that guy, all, you know, all the yeah. time. Um, I think you layer on top of that the fact that he's got a mom who he probably feels like has truly abandoned him at this point. The one person that. He was still holding on to and knew that he couldn't do anything to, but always knew that she would be there for him. Maybe he feels like she's finally shut the light off on him there as well, right? So he's just got everything going against him, and I don't think he's got anything left at this point. I think he bottoms out. I think he he regresses, reverts back to the helmet, goes back to the, uh, the shy guy, the, shy guy, <laughs> the mantra of yeah. I'm going to finish what you started. And I think he, in, he sees that Vader, not Anakin, Vader is who he wants to be like once again. He wants to finish what Vader what was set out to do, which is you know rule the galaxy kind of thing. Um, I think though the redemption part of it comes in later. I think, I think he he becomes more. Um, well, how do you get there? That's my. I mean, yeah, taking out Palpatine, but I don't know that you have any uh, choice but to take out. I don't know that there's more to it than just Palpatine alone. True. Like I don't know that I don't know what else you could do in there unless unless. Leia is at stake here where she's in, in harm's way. And, uh, you know, finally the, the, a boy, a boy's uh, mother's a boy's love for his mother comes out. Uh, there may be something there, but most likely which was rumored in, in the force away, uh, not the force awakens. I think the last Jedi, there was rumors of that as well. Yeah. 
Um, I think we talked about it on one of the shows too. And we prob- probably did. Yeah. But I, I would imagine um, it's got to be some combination of either that or the fact that, you know, Leia, or I'm sorry, Ray's in trouble. Uh, we, we don't know what his relationship is with her there. My guess is he does have feelings for her. It may not be reciprocated, but if that's well, the let's case. Let's not go there, sir. <laughs> let's, why would you do that? You did it because I'm on no, here. No, you? I didn't. You, can, did Katie get you I, and tell you no, to do that? I, yeah, I think so. I think it's a, I'm a only very kidding. likely possibility. But I don't I don't mind Raylo fans. It's okay. I don't mind. I hate the theory, but I'm cool with you guys. It's cool. But anyway. But yeah, but there's got to be, sir. I mean, to, to go from where he's at and what he's done um, to be redeemed. It, I don't know. It's a movie at the end of the day, and it <laughs> yeah, doesn't that's really. True. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot. I mean, if you think about the stuff that Anakin did, um, and and where he was. I mean, we we tend to hold no, Anakin the thing. in a very we're high over, light, yeah. right? Well, we're overthinking a lot of this, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, they're movies for kids, and it's not going to be as complex as we're all making it. It's certainly not me. You know, I want this big Greek tragedy thing to happen, and and that's not going to be the case here. But I, I'm just curious. In, in my mind, I'm trying to. I guess I'm trying to rationalize how we get there with Ben because of the things he's done, which is ironic because, you know, Anakin wiped out a bunch of kids, took out the Jedi. Uh, Kylo's big thing was, all right, he killed his dad. All right. That's, that's kind of like the ultimate sin. I get that. But when you look at a whole, like the whole thing, like, like Kylo's not as big of a murderer, I don't think as, as Anakin. So, I don't know. It's it's crazy. Like you see one in this light and the other in that light, and I don't know. Yeah, it's not it's a, crazy. It's not, yeah. it's not far fetched to say that he could be redeemed. I don't care. I mean, you can argue with me all you'd like, and you can be really mad about that if you're if you're not. Oh, on no, that I wouldn't band. be mad. No, not I you. Mean, I'm not talking about you specifically. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying in general, well, you, people you, don't you, like. Are you going to get the? Are the you gonna, yeah, because the fans are going to be oh, you're just repeating. This I guess that's the danger in that, right? Is uh, oh, oh, you're just repeating what you did in Return of the Jedi, right? So true. Again, you can't make anyone happy in Star Wars. So, I mean, what are you going to do, right? Yeah. Um, is I think you kind of have to go there because Star Wars, and this is a dirty secret that a lot of people seem to forget, is is themes that just keep repeating. Uh, so Kylo would be repeating, you know, what happened in the in previously. So I don't, I don't technically have a problem with it. I just know people are going to have a problem. But anyway, more of your thoughts, sir. I'm sorry, I'm rambling and cutting you off. But go ahead. No, you're good. Um. I think for uh, the thing that we got to keep in mind here as far as redemptions go as well, and, and we've said this in the show, you kind of alluded to it earlier, just because a character is redeemed doesn't mean that they're suddenly forgiven, right? Redemption just is all it says is that you've uh, atoned for your sins, but there are people that could still hold you in a very, uh, not in a very high light, uh, right, in, in high regards at all, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, people could look back at Vader and someone does something wrong to you. Let's just, let's remove star Wars for a second. If someone does something wrong to you and you're really upset with them and they do something to redeem them, you can say thank you, but it doesn't mean you're forgiven, right? You could, yeah. someone could still hold that against you right or wrong. They could still hold you accountable for all that those stuff. None of that stuff goes away. So the idea that somehow because he would be redeemed suddenly makes everything he's done. Okay. Um, in the in the eyes of everyone in the universe, is just not realistic. I don't think that's what we're we're going for here. I think what the the lesson that we would get from the redemption and what Star Wars has always told us is that people can do good things, and at the end of the day, it is about good and bad, uh, you know, good and evil, and light and dark. And we expect our heroes to come up, uh, rise above all that, and and do a one good deed, and and you know, save the galaxy, and that's all it would take. Right. I think that's all they're really shooting for with the redemption here <laughs> yeah. with with uh, Ben Solo. Well, I and they touched on this a little bit in Bloodlines, right? With Leia and that oh, yeah, whole absolutely. fallout. Yeah. So that's proof right there that the galaxy didn't forgive you. But, you know, the force is like, yeah, all right, we're cool. We're good. Uh, you know, the force ghosts are all happy. Like, yeah, all right. You fulfilled the prophecy, that type thing. Um, it's very this, personal. It's, right? yeah. Forgiveness is a yeah. very personal thing. It's it's Correct. it's all on the beholder. Yeah. Uh, redemption Very in the true. eyes, redemption could be something that's more globally seen, but in terms of the actual forgiveness, it's, it's a very personal one-on-one type thing. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I just don't see what, well, cause with, with Anakin story, the, the difference I guess here is that the, he was a, it was a, the chosen one, the prophecy type thing with Ben. We don't really get that other than what, I guess what Mark Hamill said or, Ryan Johnson and the thing that he, that Luke had once thought Ben was actually the chosen one. 
other than that, we don't get any of that stuff. So what is he being redeemed in the eyes of who other than maybe Ray? Yeah. Uh, I would say Ray, maybe the, and Luke, yeah, maybe that's what, that's kind of where I was going. Maybe Luke, um, the Jedi themselves, uh, maybe Leia her, him, himself. Right? If Leia is really kind of, um, extinguished the light in him or felt like that light's gone, the idea that he would redeem himself in, in the eyes of his mother, may be the ultimate redemption for him, regardless of Ray or anybody else. The fact that, I mean, to me, and maybe I'm just, I'm probably waxing my own personal feelings here, but the idea that a, that a mother, <laughs> okay. uh, a, a mother's love could be extinguished like that. And then suddenly, you know, you know, a son coming back or a daughter coming back and, and being the person that you knew and loved as a child. And I mean, I think about that now with like my own kids, right? I see them and they're making some terrible mistakes. I mean, they're not bad kids. Uh, I'm not no. saying they're doing horrible things. They're, you know, doing, uh, you know, crimes or anything, but just the <laughs> stuff that, you know, you look at your kids and you think, and that, I remember when I would come home and all they wanted to do was just run up to me and give me hugs. And they wanted me, you know, I'd go play with them and, and all that. And now these days, you know, they're going through hormones and, and they're teenagers and, and, and they come home and they're so angry. Right. And they don't want to talk to me and I can't, I can't just connect with them like I used to anymore and all that stuff. And, you, and they start making, they start saying things. And you're like, man, who is this kid? Why are they saying these horrible things? Why are they doing these horrible things? And they're, I, I'm, I'm convinced that when you send your kids to school, you lose them in a sense, because my daughter was a sweet, nice, lovely girl. And then she goes to school and picks up all the habits of other kids. Sure. That's my theory. That's, that's just what I'm going with. Yeah. But and it continues. No, and, so, and, and, and you're right. And they get very defiant and you, and there's moments in parenthood where your children are purposely defying you. They're doing things just yeah. to make you mad and, and to see what they can get away with and see how far they can push you emotionally. And, that's the kind of thing to take it back to star Wars. Yeah. I really feel for Leia in uh, more than, you know, a lot of the characters, especially in the last Jedi, because you can see the pain in her eyes. Right. Uh, and, and just thinking like, mm-hmm. this is that kid. And what has he become? What did I do? Right. There's all these feelings and emotions. Right. And so if you, if you, if you take that and you think about her from her perspective, the idea that suddenly Ben Solo, her son, her little boy is back and and does the right thing even if he doesn't make it out of this movie which we haven't really talked about whether or not he stays lives or dies but even if he doesn't make it well, out if he's gonna be redeemed he's gonna die true i mean usually mind. yeah usually it's yeah. one and one right they go hand in hand yeah um yes but the idea that he dies and he does something good whether it's saving the galaxy by killing the emperor uh whether it's saving Bray, saving his mom saving whoever yeah, that is to me is going to be like the ultimate redemption. I think it's the redemption in Leia's eyes, and I think that's probably the more important piece of the redemption. And then, you know, great if if it's if he's redeemed in the eyes of Luke and Yoda and you know Anakin and everybody else, I think that's all fine too. But to me, that's kind of where that story's at. I think that's where for me emotionally, that's where that story's at. Uh, pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. I I don't know. I mean, I don't know. This is all it's all over the place because then like I don't know. I'm just thinking off the top of my head because it goes back to Palpatine or Sidious. I keep calling him Palpatine. I always call him Sidious. I don't know why I'm changing it up now, mm. but, uh, well, the emperor, um, because a lot of things I'm like the rumors that you hear and that we've seen, you know, because, and we've, I kind of said it at the top of the show, we get the Sith troopers, the first order troopers, Kylo. Then we get the, like the bad guys seem stacked, but how does that work? Because we got rumors of like, okay, well, the First Order and, and the Sith Troopers are going to go at it. So where's Kylo in all of that? Where does he fit? Is Kylo going with the Sith Troopers because of Palpatine and he takes out the First Order to wipe out, say, Hux and all that stuff? Um, or or is it a completely different thing? I, I, I don't know where this all fits, which is driving me crazy because normally things work out. Because, you know, when we look at the rumors and the speculation and everything on Reddit and everything, it's all... Okay, we we know this, we know that, but it's all like, all right, how's this gonna fit? Kind of thing. Like, I guess when you see you you see it, like you read it, it it's different than what you see it. And so I I don't know. I'm trying to piece it together, Albert. Help me. Am I, am I gonna lose my mind here or what? I think I don't you know, are. But yeah, you'll lose it oh, one thanks. way or the other. Uh, yeah, regardless. Well, yeah, I might. Well, hopefully, I don't walk out of the, the theater. That's you know. But do you think you, you know, can get that, behind? That would, yeah. Let's say we get into the we we, we get into the rise of the Skywalker. Okay. Where, I don't know, two hours. It's rumored to be like a three hour movie at this point, right? But Which I'm fine with. I'd be fine I think with that they too. Should take, yeah, they should take their time with the last one. I, I'd just leave it at that. But okay. if you got two hours into the movie and, and the redemption begins there, 
do you find your, can you see yourself getting behind somebody like Kylo Ren who suddenly is for the light, fighting alongside Ray, rallying his first order troops, partnering with Hux, partnering with Poe, and really kind of coming together as, as, a, as a group, that, you know, bringing everybody together, almost kind of like that central figure. I know it takes away from Ray. Which, which I've got problems with yeah. already, but let's just, for the sake of this discussion. Well, I, that was one of my issues with The Last Jedi as well, but, but continue, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah, so for the sake of this discussion, but if he if he went there, I mean, okay. can you see yourself getting behind him and rallying behind him as well from as an as an audience member and thinking, wow, this is really cool. He's completely gone, uh, 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 com, uh, you know, 180. 180. And is, is um, because, I mean, I don't know, this is what we brought up uh, two episodes ago where you've got this massive fleet of Imperial Star Destroyers and Sith Troopers and, the, and, and allegedly the Emperor and whatever contingent force he's had out in the Outer Rim um, are, are probably are going up against, right? Who, who, what forces are? The, the resistance isn't that big. See, almost, the resistance is basically me, you, and Albert, yeah. uh, me, you, and Jonesy, and a couple of people from the Discord. That's my, right. That's what it equals to. I mean, I don't know. That's why Finn, when you see him, he's like, holy, we're done. Unless, and, <laughs> like, Unless there yeah. are a lot of, um, like, you know, Snap and those guys, unless there's a ton of these guys that are just out there scattered throughout the universe or the, the galaxy, I don't well, they're see. They're going to save the day. <laughs> yeah, they're not. I don't, even if you brought all those in, I just don't think they have the forces, too. So I'm really struggling with, there's no other, to me, it feels like at this point, at least, uh, given what little we know, it just doesn't feel like there's going to be enough there. And that would be something interesting to see, to see him, for me, anyways, and I'm, I'm answering your, my question to you already, but... <laughs> I, I think I could get behind that. I would like to see that. Um, and it doesn't have to be, I don't need a montage and it doesn't be, it, I don't want it to be real montage, cheesy. Montage, yeah. Right? I don't want it to be like real cheesy or anything. But You just, don't want it to be Rocky Five cheesy montage? No, and, no, and I don't, don't even want that. it to be like everything is, all is forgotten and we're a one cohesive team you know, immediately into performing oh, you mode. you want the, the uneasy tension exactly. between them. Right, make it more realistic. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's like, it'll be like a, the standoff there with all of them. Like they're, they're going to be ready to turn on each other, but they have to take this guy out first before they can go do whatever they, I mean, well, unless that happens, they take out Sidious and, and the fleet there, and then they just go at it and then go from there. As, as John Boyega said, this is the water in all wars. So we'll see what happens there. I mean, I'm in the end, I, you know, <laughs> I get in the end, I, I have a feeling and Raylo fans will be excited about this is that I end up seeing the last scene is Ray. And we see her looking at the sons and she's pregnant. And of course, you know, that, that leads into a whole can of worms. And I, I just made Katie laugh um, hysterically. Uh, for those who don't know, Katie's a, a friend of ours who's big into Raylo and, and we bust each other's chops and, and stuff. So, but anyway, that's, I, I don't know, Albert. I mean, how is that? Again, I don't, I think my bigger issue is I like, I like Kylo's character. Um, but I don't like, I, there's something about his character where I don't feel like he can be redeemed or I just despise him. And it's, and it's not even the Han Solo thing because I had no issues with Han dying. Uh, cause Han wasn't really one of my favorite characters. I had no problem to be honest. And I know that sounds horrible of me, but, yeah. um, I didn't have a problem with that. And again, I go back to that whole Han Solo thing where he kills his father and then in the last year, he's like, yeah, I just had to do it. No big deal. I didn't have a problem with him. But whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. <laughs> That's not what I, anyway. So I have an issue with that as well. Because then it seems like Han's death is a little cheap. So maybe that's where I'm struggling. So yeah, I don't know. That's, it's, a lot no, it's, of, it's a lot of it's a me problem, not a you problem or or a, whoever's problem. It's a me problem more than anything. But yeah. go ahead. No, I think that's all fair criticism. I, I think people really struggle with that. Um you know, maybe they do something in in the Rise of Skywalker to kind of ease that a little bit, right? I mean, think about this again. The movie's three hours long. Uh, they can do a lot in two hours. There's a lot of things they could throw at us, whether yep. you want to believe it or not. Uh, but maybe there is this. There's a storyline. Maybe there's a reason why. Maybe we get some kind of uh, context or introspective in, in terms of why Han, you know, gave up his body that way. Um, or, 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 and I shouldn't say, I'm. I'm presuming something. Let me let me say that. Well, no, I I truly believe that Han sacrificed himself. Exactly, he right. kind of knew. I I kind of get that. I I it's the way the, the way it all played out. You kind of get that, and I, I think that's even why he said thank you. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, but that's where and, that's the know, part where people get stuck yeah. on is like, okay, we get it. It does look and appear as though Han, you know, willfully sacrificed himself. 
but we don't understand why yet. And and if I think if we get yeah. that in the Rise of Skywalker, even if it's small, maybe even if they just allude to it in some way, uh, who knows? Maybe. Well, I don't think Han would come back as a force ghost, but, you know, imagine him having that conversation with him and telling him exactly why he did it. And somehow that is what's used to help him uh, find his redemption or, or, or come to a redemption or come, you know, come back to the light, that kind of thing. I think for me, well, that's, I think that's where yeah. that maybe also with uh, him seeing Anakin or really understanding what Anakin truly was trying to do, which was just hmm. save his family, you know, love yeah. for his family kind of thing. I think for me, I think that's where it becomes a lot easier to take something like a redemption and 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 see it. Um, and it would go back to finishing what he started, right? To take it back to this the the episode that we're doing. Uh, that would be kind of neat for him to have the, you know one of these three different ideas. If, if they're exploring any one of three of these different ideas, at the end of the day, he realizes that all three of them are wrong, and it really is about love and family, and just like George Lucas said. Yeah, and well, I I guess he, like to answer my question earlier, where I said. Where does the redemption start? Where did we get the the light side? I guess it comes in his darkest moment where he kills his own father. Yeah. You kind of see that reaction on his face after the fact. So, but I still have a problem with what happens in the, in the last Jedi where he's like, well, no, I just killed her and killed him and you know, whatever I did what I had to do. I didn't have a beef with him. Well then what the hell? I I don't know. I, I, I have a problem with that, but I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's a lot to unpack. I hope it's a three hour movie so we can uh, hopefully the last hour isn't them just, you know, sitting at Tatooine, you know, at the cantina talking about the old times. So I don't know. Um, so well, it, it's going to be interesting getting forward. And, and you know what the interesting thing is when this comes out, this episode comes out, of course, we get the Kylo Ren uh, Age of Resistance comic, I believe it is. Yeah. So we'll have even more on him. And then, of course, we get into the rise of Kylo Ren and maybe we get some more tidbits that kind of tie into where this I'll finish what you started type stuff. Um, yeah, I think, I know, we're, I think we're going to get some yeah, of that. I do. No, I, I I hope so. Yeah. I think we get some of that there. Um, but I think what, and, and maybe we can just kind of end this on, uh, here, but uh, at yeah. least on this part of here, I think with now that we've got Age of Resistance, Kylo Ren coming out, we saw the Snoke comic. We've got this four issue Rise of Kylo Ren, which we didn't even really touch, but there's so much here um, in, in terms of what we're going to be looking at here with, with, the Knights of Ren, his relationship with Luke. Um, I think we're going to get, uh, well, I think we're going to see Luke and, and, and uh, Snoke in, in the comic together and probably conversing or at least speaking in some way. Right. I think what we're going to see, I think what they're doing with this series more than anything is I think they're planting the seeds to allow for a redemption to happen. So that's not okay. as, as shocking for us on the movie. I think in the movie, I think for most you know, 99% of the movie theater fans and, and viewers are going to see it in the movie and my kids are going to flip out and be all on board, right? <laughs> they're not going to care. Yeah, yeah. The minute Kylo yeah. Ren suddenly, quote, good, they're going to be all over it and think it's the greatest thing in the world. For us, I think this is where if we're following um, the comics and all that, I think we get a little bit more insight into just truly how that happens rather than just movie magic. I think we're going to start seeing the seeds of of a lot of that in and maybe uh, just, you know, make a little bit, take the take the edge off a redemption arc a little bit more for us by having this additional context and really getting into the head of Ben Solo and not necessarily mm. Kylo Ren. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that sticks out in, in speaking of the rise of Kylo, the thing that and I highlighted it here was voices call from both his past and future, which is where it got me started on the whole the helmet talking and maybe him having visions and and seeing things. And maybe it's Palpatine again doing his dark magics, um, so to speak, with, uh, you know, how he did with uh, Anakin in the womb there, manipulated and all that stuff. So, I don't know. It's a it's a very twisty, windy road with Kylo. Again, this is what fascinates me about Kylo. As much as I despise him character-wise, he's one of the more intriguing characters in the sequel trilogy, which is interesting because I, I thought Rey would have been that, but, you know, that's a whole other podcast for another day. Um, but, yeah, so this is... Uh, it's been fun, though. Let me, I, let me I ask mean, you one I, last I, question. I, yeah, go ahead. Before we go, one, one last, last question. question. Yes, sir. Uh, because we it. got five minutes left before you start, you know, cutting me off here. <laughs> well, uh, I was really going to cut you off there, but, yeah. you know. But that, go ahead. No, I got one last question because it is around that that line of uh, voices call from both the past and the future. But what if mm -hmm. what if at some point, and maybe it's in, in the fourth issue of this series, Kylo Ren gets a vision uh, mm -hmm. or is even physically spoken to somehow in a vision that he is going to be 
redeemed or that he is going to at some point go to the light. That is his destiny. And, and he really struggles with this, right? He doesn't like this idea, but he knows he can't escape it. And that's where a lot of this angst comes from. Do you think there's anything here that that vision of the future is, is, is really him finding out that at some point, as much as he tries to be like Vader, as much as he tries to be the bad guy, sorry, not to, so not to is, play on is, Han Solo, but he's no, a good is guy. It, is it more of less like, uh, maybe he's angry because he's more like Luke than he likes to admit. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe that's where the, it, it even gets, it, that builds up that even bigger anger in him. Uh, and why he has such that adverse reaction when he sees Luke, especially in the comic there, uh, which could be possible. Um, I, it, it's, I, I think we're going to see some kind of vision or something. And maybe this is why he maybe snaps back at Ray and says, no, you'll be the one to turn uh, when the time comes, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it, maybe it's after the fact of, of that whole thing. And then he realizes he's going to turn. I don't know. I, I really do hope they get into some kind of, vision stuff like they did with the cave uh i i hope we get that i mean i would love to see that because again we need to get inside his head we tried many a times on the show we just need to get really into his head and and figure all that out so i don't know yeah i, I, I think mean it's i'm a game okay changer. with it yeah i think it's a game changer yeah. if, he, if he if he's known this entire time uh or at least yeah. had a vision that at some point he was going to turn to the light I think it's but which goes back to what I what I originally the original preference of this whole thing is I will finish what you started. Maybe it happens prior to, and he knows I got to go down this this path. Like he, right. when he when Luke comes in, he's already had the vision, and Luke ignites the saber, and he just blows up the hut and just leaves and goes on this destiny. Although that takes away from the anger towards Luke, or I I don't know. See, this is where it gets all jumbled and it really falls apart right there. So I I don't know. It's hard to say. But I do think we'll be getting more visions and him maybe inside his head, so to speak. Um, other than that, oh, you know what we didn't touch on? We didn't touch on the uh, rise of Kylo Ren with the Vader's commander there. But I guess you guys can talk about that next week. <laughs> yeah, we're going to we'll break down that uh, that whole comic. I'm looking forward to it. Honestly, there's so much in to in that. Well, I don't know. I'm yeah. kind of jumping ahead. I mean, there's the Star Wars previews yeah. out there. If you haven't had a chance, you can go look at that. Um, yeah. But yeah, the the I, that's super intriguing to me. Anytime. Especially now that we're in this first order era, anytime that we have like old imperial tech or people that were around in the empire, uh, you look at resistance and, and some of the characters there, that's all super intriguing now for me because it's like, okay, I want to know what they felt and what they went through. And, and it's really cool. I think it's very wise of somebody like Kylo Ren and because I don't think we give him enough credit for this. Um, it's, some, it's super wise, I think, of him to have somebody that was around during the empire and and um, not to spoil the comic, but he takes somebody with him from that era because he wants to, you know, he un he understands and acknowledges that there's value in having somebody like that. And because he's coming from the Empire, I get all kind of giddy. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll be breaking down that comic here uh, pretty soon. Uh, I think it comes out on Tuesday of this week on the 25th. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, expect a, an episode of that just much like we did with the Snow comic very soon. All right, time's up, sir. Am I we're we're going to oh. end the show. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to, it's right on the button. Hey, here, what do you so think gonna, about? As, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, oh, you bastard. <laughs> as your editor, you're going to stop right now, sir. <laughs> um, anyway. All right, well, we'll close the show out here. We've got, um, in terms of the shout outs and Patreons, I don't think we've got anything new. That's not a bad thing. I know it's, we had a like a huge flux of them, influx of them yeah. not, not too long ago. So, uh, but thank well, you. Well, my shout out is to everybody. No, thank you well, for listening to us. Even me? Yes, everybody. Yeah, uh, no. Okay. Not you. No, that's fair. And Jonesy, no, not you either. But everybody who's ever listened to the show and all that stuff. So I thank you very much. I appreciate it. And it's nice that you guys give Albert and Jonesy a chance. You did. And it's successful. And I am happy about it. And uh, I'll leave it at that. But anyway, and Patreon. You know, it's funny because I was going to do this as a Patreon thing. This whole uh, Kylo Ren uh you know, I will finish what you started for Patreon, but it, that things change. So now I got to come up with something for Cantina After Dark on the Patreon for this month uh, or next month, I should say. So I'm going to have to think about something uh, soon. But anyway, mm. that's all I got, uh, uh, Albert. So if you want, you could just end the show or you, I'm sure you get something else to say because it's you. Um, No, I, I don't know. Wow, wow. wow. No, it's check amazing. us out. Follow us on uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, come see us on discord. We'll put all the links in the show notes for you guys. We'd like to interact <laughs> with you as much as we can. So, um, yes. Yeah. 
we'll uh, end the show here. And again, we'll come back next week to do Age of Resistance, Kylo Ren. And beyond that, I think I've got something special planned for, uh, I want to do something on death, rebirth, resurrection. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got some that ideas. Sounds... It's going to be fun. I can't wait. And then we oh, got, we're I, coming I, up on 300, yeah. dude. Oh, are we? Episode 300 is coming well, up. We, Eight more episodes. Survive that long? Yes. Wow. wow so we've got a huge extravaganza planned for that. Oh, we do? No. I we have nothing planned for it yet. Oh, but I thought I was going to have to order no, pizza. No, it's coming. And, you know. Oh, all right. Shoo. Yeah, well, it's coming. Don't worry. So, all right. We'll end yeah, the show there. It, I can assure you that it's not going to be a big episode. <laughs> it's going to be. Oh, man, gonna I'm going like, to hey, oversell this like you've no, never. Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah. Totally overselling that one. But anyway. Well, this has been fun. I had fun. Uh, again, hopefully you guys will find something with this whole cockamamie speculation. If there's something there, just, you know, reach us in Discord. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm an idiot. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but it was fun. At least we get to kind of dissect something and have a little fun. Yep. So that's all I get to say, Albert. All right. Last words for me. Uh, you're wrong and you're an idiot. <laughs> Thank you. You're still listening? Wow. That's amazing. Well, I'm here to give you the disclaimer. Normally, we do a big, long, drawn-out disclaimer thing saying what's what and who's what and all that other stuff, but I think you guys kind of know that Lucasfilm and Disney have uh, no affiliation with us at all, uh, and we have none with them. Uh, we talk about Star Wars, which is their property and all that other good, fun stuff, uh, but I think you can tell which is our stuff and which is their stuff. If you can't, well, then send a lawyer to send an email to me, and I'll be glad to chat with them. Other than that, you know what's what, so that's your disclaimer. 